Hey, Shadow Hunters, Mundanes, and Delm Worlders. Welcome to my discussion slash review of Shadow Hunters Episode 10, This World Inverted. I'm going to do this my way. I'm not going to. The shortcut, the uh, edited version, like the shorter version, eh, <laughs> no. Not, I mean, I, I appreciate everybody who watches these videos. Would love to interact in the comments, but nobody wants to interact, I think. Okay, enough about that. Enough pity party for me. I'm just going to go through all, like, most of the scenes. And I can go word for word on everything, because that would take forever. Um, okay, though, I'm going to try to look at the notebook not as much as I did last time. Because that's annoying. Uh, Jason, Clary, and... <laughs> Uh, and Melly Orn in the Fay Glade. Okay. I'm not going to call him a Seelie because that's, like I said before, Seelie and Unseelie or Fay Quartz. He's a fairy. He's a Fay. I don't know why. Um, what was something else that they worded differently? Like, anyway. And then he said, you know about the remark about Isabel, Isabel being the smart one in the family? How many, raise your hands, wanted Jace to put his foot up Mally Orne's butt? Oh, look at me! Oh, look at that. Bleepity bleep bleep making fun of my, I mean, making fun of Jace like that. Mm -mm. He only bit his tongue because he, they needed his help. Otherwise, Jace probably would have said something, but I don't know. Oh, Isabel and Alec argue. That never happens. Can we just have Sissy already, please? This whole Isabel and Melly Orn thing just makes me want to puke in my mouth. Repeatedly. Season two, Sissy, please. I don't care if it happens to someone in the books. It's better than fucking Melly Orn. Excuse my language. But it is. I don't like him. He, him and Lady can just go. Just leave. And apparently, they can create portals. Okay. Oh. Uh, didn't they crack you up the way? <laughs> Make it, like I can just imagine how many takes that took to create that portal. I mean, seriously, you know, Mag's much cooler. But anyway, um, and uh, the portals are their deepest secrets. Uh, yeah, I'm sure it's not it because we all know Melion has another secret. Hmm. Anyway, um, and then Clary asks what the other dimensions like and. Meliorn explains and Jace like, could you be more vague? <laughs> like, I want to go just bump to Jace, like, eh. Anyway. And, um, oh. And Luke and Alark are talking to Jade Wolf. Or the police station, no? I think it was the Jade Wolf. Yeah, it was Jade Wolf. And, um, a lark thinks that Luke should stay out of the whole shadow hunter business. I'm going to have you met Luke. He has two people he loves that are involved in the shadow hunter world. Okay. You know. Him. Oh, and then Simon shows up because he's supposed. To, well, one. Um, uh, Raphael. <laughs> Brain froze for a second. I was, you know, getting tired of training Simon. I'm going. Simon talks about when he's nervous. He just does. One of his cute quirks. Um, when he he arrives and he's like, and all the other wolves are like, um, growling at him, and he just like waves at Luke. That was so cute. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't the best idea for Simon to show up there. He may have sh wanted to text or call Luke and arrange another meeting spot. But I know 
of a sudden wasn't thinking about it. He's like, well, what? I'm a vampire now, so what? I'm the same, you know, he's the same person he was before. He just has a different diet, you know. To him, that's the only difference in the, you know, things. Oh, and then that waitress um, comes up. Do you think it's Maya or just some random girl? I think it could be her, maybe. You know, she looks nothing like she does in the book if it is her, but when Simon's fangs popped out of the side of her, it's like puberty all over again with less sits. Uh, I love, I just love Simon. Well, I love Luke too, of course. Mm. Oh, and then Jason, Claire, you're talking. I love, yeah, like I said, every week I love those two. And then they tell Melly Orrin that, you know, if she finds a portal that, to let Jason to be her backup so, you know, she doesn't have to go against, <coughs> excuse me, Valentine alone or whatever happens to, you know, show up at the portal. And Melly Orrin reluctantly agrees, of course, because he's a butt. <sighs> and then Clary steps through the uh, portal and merges with the other Clary. I love how um the other dimension, or other world dimension, whatever you want to call it, was brighter. Like, it was, like, really sunny, like, so you could tell, like, which world was ours and which world was, you know, the other, you know, the other one. And she's like, like, she, like, freaks out, like, Valentine's in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah, but enough would be the best weapon against him, Clary. I know she just grabbed the first thing that she could see, but, and the whole co cosplay thing, I was like, I can actually see her and Simon doing that. Oh, the commercial. <laughs> that was so fun. I literally laugh like when, when I watch that because, like, first, like, Hodge has his own, <coughs> excuse me, his own dojo, and Luke has his bookstore. That was a shout out to all the, re you know, readers of the fan who are watching the show. It's like, oh, I still don't get why they made him a cop instead of a bookstore owner, but, you know, potato, potato, you know. <clears throat> I mean, like, the movie showed him, like, in the bookstore a couple times, but not, like, him actually doing anything, but anyway. Oh, the whole Jocelyn and Valentine flirting and being affecting to each other just, like, creeped me out. It's like, Oh, uh, no. No, please. <laughs> um, then uh, Clave arrests Isabel. Yeah, she gave away all the Shadowhunter secrets to Meliorn because he's just that good. She didn't tell him anything. I don't know where they got this idea in their head that she just, like, Told all the Shadow Hunter secrets to Melior and I don't get where they got that. F bleep bleep bleep. Bum. I don't know. <sighs> oh, Alec defends Isabel. I'm like, oh, you know, at least get one scene right by defending your sister, Alec. Oh, Clary and Otherworld. Simon and Isabel are hanging out just outside of Java Jace. Mm, that's funny. I I love the alternate. I love this episode because it just like we, we, it's been so dark and heavy and you know intent. You know the intensity has built up in the last few episodes. And it's just nice to have an episode where it was. I mean, there was some you know real world stuff in there, but the uh, the alternate. <coughs> excuse me. 
the alternate world stuff was just fun. It was just like, well, you know, this is how the characters might be if they didn't have all uh, hold the whole Shadow Hunter thing and you know defending the world and all that. Other world, Isabel has a crush on Valentine. Ah! Seriously. Ah! Oh, um. And then Alec is planning the 4D launch party. And it's like, kind of, Alec was kind of like a cross between himself and Magnus in the alternate universe. Like, our Magnus and then their Alec kind of thing. It's kind of like a combo. <gasps> oh. Clary and Jace made out. And he kissed her neck. Let me just fangirl. Let me just bask in that for a moment. Okay. I know it's the alternate universe, but I'm just happy it happened. Seriously, I'm not picky about when and where. I mean... Like, if I wanted to exactly like the book, I can go back and reread the books. I'm enjoying the show for the characters. I mean, I've, I had months of seeing stories and pictures and interviews where I didn't expect it to be like the book. As long as the characters who are, I would say about 70 to 80 percent like they are in the books, that's... I'm happy with that, you know, because I'd rather have this show than nothing at all, in my opinion. And everybody who keeps bashing it, then stop watching it. Why make a video every single week bashing the show? Like, all of a sudden, it's going to be, like, the adaption is going to seem to be identical to the book. What adaption is identical to the book that I like? I, You know, the Hunger Games movies are like the Hunger Games books, but we all know how I feel about... Well, no, you don't know how I feel about the books. I'm never going to make a video about how I feel about those, but... Let's just say... Meh. Now back to Shadowhunters. As Amanda goes on her weekly tirade. <sighs> Let's see, where were we? Okay. Oh, I already mentioned that. Um, Oh, Luke and Simon talking about Clary and... um. I think this was the part where, you know, uh, Luke told Simon about killing one of the um, circle members, and he said he did to, and Simon's like, you know, like, why? And he's like, oh, to protect Claire from the circle. He's like, oh, you know, okay, he got it. And Simon just wants to go home, which he can't do, and we all know why, and we all know what happens when he does. Well, most of us, I should say, know happens. Oh. And Simon starts growling like a little guard dog. Uh, I meant vampire. And then he texts the... Is he a cop or is he like higher up than... I think he's higher up than that. I can't remember exactly what he is, but you know the other guy. Oh, Jace tells Melanie Warren if uh, Clary doesn't come back saying he's going to be six feet under. And then Melanie Warren's like, have you ever seen a Sealy Knight fight? I wouldn't be bragging about my prowess. I'm going, have you seen Jace fight? He has he has more than enough reason to brag. <laughs> Please, Jace is like the best shadow hunter ever, or at least of his generation, so... Yeah, I'm sure you'd win in a fight against Jace. Not unless you cheated. Mm -hmm, really. mm. Ah, damn, allergies always act up when I'm filming. Oh, why? Oh, it's an awesome... The portal's attracting demons. Okay. We have to have some reason for the demons to show up in this episode. They're interdimensional traveling demons. Hmm. Oh, Magnus giving Clary a reading, the little sedate nerd Magnus. Still adorable though. Um 
and Chairman Meow and Church were in this episode. <laughs> so cute. Um, I heard on a, on a side note that has to totally do with what I'm talking about. I promise. I heard that uh, Harry is allergic to cats, and that's why the cats aren't in that the show. But they could still be in the background, like in another room, just walk on by the door, like an open doorway or something. Don't, doesn't have to be anywhere near him. Just saying. But I applaud him for, you know, holding Chairman Meow just for, you know, that moment, you know, it's probably like, you know, hard for him with his allergies and stuff. So, bravo to Harry. Bravo to Harry. And, um. Oh. And then, um. Where? I'm still on this side, huh? See, I'm so organized. And all of this seemed... I, okay, now, still talking about Magnus and Clary in the alternate universe. <coughs> Excuse me. And she tries to show him, like, her runes. I guess she forgot that they don't exist in that realm. Um, it's like, all I can see is that you need... You're, um... In need of a, t a serious tan. And then she goes to draw him proof. And she's like the quickest drawer I've ever seen. She can draw an elaborate... You know what I could draw in two, two seconds? A smiley face. She can draw like a whole elaborate thing in like five seconds. It's like... <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, and um... Yeah, I've nicknamed her Clary Quick Draw Frey. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I make myself laugh sometimes. Um, Magnus's magic is dormant, and they proceed to try to un... Oh, I should say try to wake it up. Alec and Lydia talk. And, um... Oh, and Alec tells her what happened at the City of Bones... For some reason, he felt that he needed to spill his guts to her for some reason. Then he comes up with this brilliant idea, because he loves coming up with brilliant ideas, obviously, about trading the cup for Isabel's uh, freedom. Then he goes to get the cup, and obviously Jace took it, so the clave couldn't get it. Give to Claire, we all saw last week. <laughs> See, where am I? Oh, and then uh, back to Claire and Magnus. Uh, Claire's looking at like an old warlock uh, spell book. And then Magnus makes this potion to um, kickstart his uh, magic. Or awaken his magic. And he's like, the face of me is like... Mm, it is so funny. Um. <laughs> she's, and Claire's like, no. And he's like, mm, give it a minute. <laughs> um. Then Claire's like, demonstrating Max's, like, you know, how his hand, his hand mo movements for when he does magic and... I was like, I don't look like that. Claire's like, yeah, you kind of do. <laughs> oh, and then um, Claire gets this idea to use the portal shard from her necklace. See if that would help Magnus at all. I, I don't know. But it ends up kicks, uh, you know, energizing him, and he's like, oh. This is what I'm talking about. We got lift off. I'm like, I could be taken the wrong way so easily. <laughs> I was like, I'll be good and not, y'all can come to your own conclusion on what people could think of that statement. I know I'm being bad. Bad me. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Jay stole the cup and then Alec. He also Izzy because Izzy knew about that and didn't tell him and I 
Oh, of course, Alec blames all their troubles and problems on Jace, because Alec has, has done nothing wrong. He's a perfect, innocent little angel choir boy. Seriously, Alec? You've done a lot of effed up crap in the last few weeks. This started all the way when the show started, but it's gotten progressively downhill in the last few episodes. For Alec. <laughs> And then he's like wants to do this parabatai tracking thing that could weaken them both. And he's like, oh, you, you should, you know. And Izzy's warning him not, you know, not to do it. And she said it could break, which it can't, but break uh, the, you know, bond between him and Jay's. And he's like, oh, Jesus is dead to me. And I'm like, I wish I had the graphics to show steam coming out of my ears and me breathing fire. Because that's about how I feel when Alex said that. I wanted to throw something at my freaking television. Alec keeps doing horrifically hurtful stuff every freaking week. Jesus would never ever do this to him, and Alec just keeps doing it, keeps shh, with a, or in his case, bow and arrow, but, wait, I heard, <sighs> oh, now we go to the Dark Simon scenes. I thought that was funny because I realized right away that that tool he was holding was just like something to clean your teeth with. I don't know why the other guy didn't kiss him. Like, that looks like... Yeah, it's like the whole fake torch thing. It's kind of... Oh, oh, now I, now I fucking got sneeze. Oh, boy. I... Yeah, they should have mentioned something about, oh, let's come up with a plan to, you know... You know... Relieve my guilt, prove I'm innocent kind of thing. But they just jumped right into it and go, why is Simon... No, this must be some part of some plan, because Simon wouldn't turn, go dark side all of a sudden. And then, um, you know, the whole plan about, you know, making Simon out to be the demonic killer, and so uh, Luke could get his job back and not go to jail. He comes in and he just shoots Simon, like... <laughs> Over and over again, and it's like those two actually make a good team. Well, they have known each other a long time, so that probably helps. And then we go on to Karen Izzy getting ready for the uh, party, and Isabel freaking out about <coughs> excuse me about the shiner she got at self defense class. I don't think that makeup quite worked with her skin, but, you know. No big deal, really. In the Mad Hatter party. Maybe a tie-in for a movie that's coming out. And uh, Jace asks her to dance. She's like, oh, I don't know. You know, because she's afraid of losing herself. Because every time she's a around him, she starts to, you know, lose herself in the alternate universe because Jace is quite distracting to her. <laughs> but in this universe, they're dating, so he did he, the other world Jace, he's like totally confused, like, why is she acting like this? He doesn't understand at all, poor other world Jace. Oh, Valentine introduces himself to Jace, and the other world Jace is like, I can so nervous. He's stuttering and can't even get his words out. It's like complete opposite of our Jason. That's the whole point because these characters are supposed to be like the opposite of our, you know, world. <coughs> Excuse me. And then we go back to um, Alec. Calling what J what Clary's doing, trying to save her mom and stop Valentine as a 
Pointless Crusade. Really? Why wouldn't you want to accomplish that too? I don't get why Alec even talks anymore, but anyway. Then of course, um, by the time that the demon is attacking Jason Meliorn outside the portal, that's when they do this whole parabatite tracking thing. And so Jace is weakened right when he needs his strength the most. Just like, of course. I have one thing to say. Jace would never, I, I think it said this earlier, probably did, but anyway. Jace would never do this to Alec or anybody he loves. He would never stab them in the back, ever, for any reason. Um, oh, then Al uh, Otherworld Alec uh, flirts with Magnus, and he's like, oh, playing hard to get, I love a challenge. Ooh, is that a mirror image of something Magnus said a few episodes ago? Hmm, me think so. Oh, Harry and Jace kiss again. Let me have a moment. Okay. Uh, then Simon comes over asking if he can borrow, uh, his, no, Clary. And just like, oh, only if you give her back. <laughs> and then Simon talks to Clary about asking El Isabel to move in with him. And then they do like this whole Dracula stare thing, which is so cute because I can totally see Clary and Simon doing that since they were like little kids. It's like, look into my eyes. <laughs> I love that. Um, and Simon goes off and dances with Izzy, who's like over the right. <laughs> so funny. And uh, then Magnus comes over and he's like, you know, it's time to go, you know. Look for the portal, and Clary's lost herself into the other world so much that she doesn't remember Magnus. And then Magnus is showing her different images, like a little uh, projection. And then finally, after some symbol thing came up, I don't even know what that was. Um, she, you know, goes back to being herself, and they go off to look for the portal. Then, um... Luke's talking with that other cop, CIA, higher-up guy, the one they kidnapped, and um, they give Luke his job back, and then, um, I think, no, I think the scene with Luke, Alaric, and Simon was before that, and they're like, we owe you for uh, helping our um, Alpha, and so I was like, oh, does that man get Mushu for life? <laughs> and then, back to Clary and Magnus looking for the portal. And she goes, and Magnus like, oh, I'll, you know, I'll know when I see it. And then, Jace had seen Magnus and Clary go down the st stairs together. And he thinks that Clary's cheating on him with Magnus. Is funny. Um, and then he just like breaks up with her. Mm. Then a demon attacks, and the other world just such a wuss. I know he's never seen a demon before, and demons don't exist in that world or haven't for a long time. Um, and he's like, What is that thing? And then, uh, in our world, Jace is passed out from the whole thing Alec did with the tracking. And Melly Orton, like, slaps him a little bit, and Jace wakes up. Or, you know, wake it, you know. And Jace is like, did you kill it? And Melly Orton's like, no. He wants to, cl he wants to close the, the portal. 
So, because more demons are coming and he doesn't want them to get into the other world or whatever. Then Jace uh, jumps to the portal to go get Clary or if even if the portal closed, at least he'd be with, you know, Clary. Anyway. Then he merges with, of course, the other world, Jace, who's cowering in the corner like a big baby. So weird seeing Jace like that, but I know it's like, like I said, complete opposites. And then real uh, Jace asks Clary if she's okay, and mind, and then he sees what he's wearing. He's like, "Mind filling me in," and of course she fills him in. And then the demon comes, and Clay's kicks ass. Huh. Love that scene. I love all the kick-ass scenes, like with, you know, the whole team, or Clary and Jace, or Izzy and Alec. Mostly Izzy. Um. Oh, Jace gets stung by the demon, or poked with it. Yes, yeah, I want to say stung. And then he's not looking so good. Of course, he said, oh, no, I can still fight, you know. I think she gave him... No, she couldn't give him a rat see until they went back through the portal. Okay, Magnus finds the portal, then Jace tells him to close the portal for their his world's safety. And Magnus tells Claire that he o he owes her for, you know, bringing back his, you know, magic and his life back. Um Isabel and Alec uh Alec have a brother sister moment. Which Alec totally doesn't deserve. And then, uh, Terry tries to put in a rat ratsy on, uh, Jason. It doesn't work. They're in, uh, you know, in Chernobyl and Valtan's lair. And they discover that, you know, evidence to prove that he's building an army. Then they open the locker and find... Michael Wayland, Jace, the Jace's father. It's like, is that really Michael Wayland, or is it Valentine with that whole disguising room thing or sh shifting room, whatever you want to call it? And just the look on Jace's face and all that. Do Dominic did an amazing job on that scene because Jace looked. Generally surprised and upset. So we'll have to see where that goes. Um, I I really liked this episode. I thought it was a fun episode. Most of it was very fun. I don't have a problem with the ending because we don't know where they're going to go with it yet. It could go one of two ways or three or four. So I don't have any problem with that part. I'm kind of interested to see where they're going to go with that. And that has been my video on episode 10, This World Inverted, and thanks for watching. Peace.